easy, easy fishing. They got a nice little spot here. Bigger fish, look at that. And all right, so I just walked back from the beach and it is hot out there. And you know what, kids are on the beach. I got my fishing poles, of course. I got the kids' toys. Uh, it's time to go fishing. So I'm gonna grab my tackle box. I'm gonna grab my fishing bowls, and we're gonna head off to the beach, and I'm gonna show you how you catch a few fish and keep the kids entertained while they're digging around in the sand and doing whatever else, and we're gonna have some fun with this. All right, fish lots, let's get into it. <laughs> That's using your resources right there. Baby, baby carriage tackle storage. There we go, heading to the beach with the kids. Gonna try and catch some kingfish, I think. Maybe a flounder if we're lucky. All right, now on the beach, getting fishing with the kids. And there's grandpa fish a lot, carrying my poles, doing his, <laughs> doing his bit. <laughs> There we go, classic use of a baby carriage for fishing. There we go, a little bucktail, that's gonna be my weight. Tied to a high-low rig here, basically. We're gonna fish this up with fish bites. And that's gonna be it. That's as easy as it gets right there, fish lots. Oh, oh, look at that, went after the gulp. All right, there's a little spot. There you go, possibly one of the easiest and best baits that you could use, just bloodworm alternatives. Really awesome, just some fish bites here. This stuff will literally last you all day. I'm gonna take one strip of this. And a common mistake people do is they put way too much on the hooks. So these are really little kingfish we're gonna fish for, so no need to do that. Just gonna take a little snip right here. There you go. Put the whole rest of the pile back in the bag. No reason to waste anything. Seal it back up. And really, that's about the size of bait that you really need to catch some kingfish or just some of these little fish that live in the beach right here. So let's put it on, let's take a look, let's see what we can catch. Baiting these up, nothing crazy. I'm just gonna put the hook through it twice. See, just like this. And these things are durable. There we go. One strip. There we go, just double hook. That's all you need. Kingfish are gonna come up, bite this. They can't grab it in, they can't try to shake it off. They're gonna have to commit to get a hook. And that's exactly what I want them to do. So here's the second piece. And there you go, second one ready to go. Now my bucktail, let's see if we can't catch a kingfish. All right, finally, man, it was hot. That's why it's gonna feel good. All right, let's get to some fishing. So I'm kind of double dipping here, right? I kind of have a bucktail and gulp on for any flounder. They may want to take the bait, and then of course, uh, the fish bites on a top and bottom rig, or a high-low rig, is to catch those kingfish. Again, my target when I'm casting here is that foam caused by the breaking waves. And there you go, there's a fish. And that's how you do it, fish lots. Just like I said, that's the exact spot we were looking for. And the exact fish I wanted. That was the exact spot we were looking for. And a fish hit it right as those waves came through and created that uh, that sea foam. Oh, oh, look at that, went after the gulp. All right, there's a little spot. And that's what's nibbling on, uh, that's all right, just got him in the tail there. There you go, fish lots. This is just a little spot. I caught him in the tail there, you saw? And all that meant was he went for that top bait, he went for that uh, the fish bites, and the bucktail on the bottom got him. Now, he'll be all right. He's got a little bruise there in the tail. That'll be okay, didn't hit any organs or anything, but this is great bait, by the way. This is a little spot. If, if you're really fishing for big bass, there's a great way to get a little piece of bait like this, put a hook through them, and then send them out and really get like a big blue fish, a shark, a big skate, I don't know, whatever's over here. We're gonna let him go though. 
a little bruised, but okay. And there we go. Bye-bye, Mr. Spot. So a couple misconceptions here. One is you have to walk all the way out to the canyon to make a cast so that you're fishing where you think great white sharks are swimming. Um, don't have to do that. As a matter of fact, most of the fish you're going to catch is right here in this chop right here. And you can see all the foam, all the sand being kicked up. That is ideal because there's a lot of crabs and crustaceans and clams and all sorts of stuff that's getting turned up by the surf. And you can tell I'm not standing that far into the ocean. Okay? I'm just standing right ankle deep and I'm casting right into that sea foam right in front of me there. There we go, there's another one. Our little spot. Hey, look, there we go, another one. That's how you do it, fish lots, just fish after fish. Nothing too crazy. A little bit better one right there. Definitely some great bait, by the way. Great, great bait. These things sell for $3 a fish. Come striper season, by the way. There you go, bud. You know, even on the beach, what you want to be doing is looking for structure, okay? And what I mean by structure is you're looking at the waves and you're looking at how they break, basically. So you can see right out in front of me, you can see that sea foam. There's a spot right there where it comes up. The sand drops off right here. So I know I'm in the right area here. Now, when I'm gonna move spots, I don't have to walk a million miles down the beach. All I gotta do is just pivot a little bit, right? If I see a bowl, if I see a sandbar, if I see those waves getting broken up a little bit more than over here, which they are, I'll fish those areas. And I'm just trying to figure out exactly what these fish want on the beach today. And I'm getting bit, those fish bites are getting bit. Another tip here, never cut yourself short. Fish all the way, even in this foam right here, you can still catch a fish. So I'm gonna fish all the way to my feet, just like that, and look at that. He stole a fish bite. That is pretty impressive to take a fish bite. So let's go rebate. All right, so the little bait stealers stole my bait. I'm gonna cut off a little bit bigger of a piece this time. It's all right, pick it up from the sand. It's pretty impressive if a fish could actually seal some fish bites off you, and that's uh, exactly what happened. A lot of spot out there, and these things are just glorious because if you bought bloodworms, you're literally gonna go through $4,000 of bait with bloodworms in these spots and these kingfish. So here we go, we're gonna bait them back up. Okay, well, there was a hook in the finger. What I don't want to do is give a lot of extra bait where these fish could grab the ends and shake it off. So this is about right right there. There we go, gonna do it again. This time trying not to hook myself. Another thing you could do is when you have these bait hooks like I have, you could run it up the hook and then you could bait it towards the bottom. And so you don't have a lot coming off the bait. See, just like this, but you still have it secured on two different sections of the hook. See, just like that. So you could run it up the hook like that, and that actually works really well too. This way, when they're trying to grab the ends, they're still always around that hook point, and that's exactly what you want. That was actually perfect timing for a cast, right in between the two waves, and I'm fishing right in that white foam. I'm getting hit. I'm still getting hit. Here you go. Here's the joys of fishing on the beach. See? There's one little goob. And there's the Mrs. Fish a lot and the baby goob. Hello, baby goob. Hi. Daddy's fishing. <laughs> the trick is, is you want them to put some weight just like that on the hook. And that's how you're going to try and catch them. But their mouths are super small. I'm probably using a little bit too big of hooks, uh, honestly, for this. Just keep reeling, and when you feel that weight, that's when you set the hook. There you go, just like that. Hopefully there's a nicer fish. We'll see here, though. Yeah. Oh, no, I got him sideways. I hooked him sideways. That's why, that's why he feels nicer. Again, he went after the fish bites, and I got him with the bucktail. Yeah, pretty good fish. All right, it's okay. Didn't get him in the guts or anything. Just got him in the 
and the tail. There you go, nice little spot. A lot of fish here, a lot of spot. You can tell how small that mouth is. So, you know, just having fun on the beach. There you go, buddy. There we go. Oh yeah, that's why I'm Johnny Fish a lot. <laughs> Yeah, the problem is if you have blood worms and stuff, it costs like 24 bucks for jumbos or whatever. And they, these fish will just steal them all day long. Yeah, they demolish them. Yeah. You got another bite, another bite, bite it, bite it. About no Come on, a little bit of weight on there. You gotta wait for a little bit of weight. You know? A little bit of action on it. You know, there you go. And that's how you do it. You gotta wait for a little bit of weight, and you hit him. I think I sidewinded this one. Look, got him with the bucktail. I think he went after the fish bite, and I got him with the bucktail. We got another fish right there in the surf. Gotta love it. Fishing with Johnny Fishel outside. The kids are asleep on the beach. Again, I didn't have a whole lot of time to you know, pick my spot, but I saw a nice foam blanket right here in front of me, nice sandbar. Look at the waves, how choppy they are in front of me. That is perfect. And that's where these fish are. And sure enough, what I tell you, sidewinder them with a the bucktail. Again, these fish should be okay, just superficial wound. Got them in the meat. Let me show you something. See this mesh right there? See right there? That is why this is so effective of staying on the hook is because you literally can't get this stuff off. It's literally mesh. The bait is baked into the mesh and it's just super awesome. Stays on there and the fish can't rip it off. And that's why when you're fishing with stuff with very small mouths, the bait stealers as we call them, this is really, really good stuff. I'm not even going to attempt to take this off. I actually got to cut it. So I'm just going to put a new piece of bait on right over it. There you go, Johnny fish a lot catching fish and the family relaxing on the beach. What could be better? Hi, Finn. Uh, use that cute baby. Oh, yeah. oh, you dumb sand all over your face. Here's Ben. Man, I'm jealous of kids that they could just sleep like that. There you go, see it? Bang, bang, bang. Those machine gun hits. Bang, 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 bang. You just gotta wait. So put a little bit of weight on there. Set the hook. There's a bigger fish just splashed out there. Good idea, always keep your eye out. Oh man, they're just massacring it. There we go. Oh, that was a good takedown right there. I just didn't get it. Now, I don't know if it's going to show up on the GoPro here, but you can kind of see there's a sandbar right there. It's where those waves stand up, and then it just gets knocked down over the sandbar. There's a little trough right in front of it. One, I could see it because it's brown in color, and two, I could tell by the way the waves are getting broke up by it. And that's exactly the type of spots you're really looking for when you're beach fishing. A lot of people, they just walk down to the beach, they think you're going to throw the bait wherever, and you're going to get people, or you're going to get fish just randomly attacking your baits. It's just not how it works. <laughs> it's not how any of it works. And if you watch fishing with Johnny Fish a lot, a lot, you'll tell I put a huge emphasis on a little bit of pre-trip planning and a little bit of spot location for every, every trip. All right, fish a lot. So you see the tide coming in, right? Now this setup here is perfect. There's nothing to it. This is a super light setup. And just so I caught like six, seven fish off it. Really easy, but I'm casting out to that foam blanket and we're catching fish, right? But now the water is coming up. Okay, you see the tide is coming in. You can see the waves are getting bigger. It's pushing me back. And the current is really starting to rip now. So now you're gonna have to transition. You're gonna have to pivot. Cause now look at my line. My line is now kind of getting washed down the shore. We call that scoping out towards the shore. And I just can't keep my baits in the strike zone long enough to trigger the bites I'm looking for. Good to pivot right now. We gotta go with bigger gear cause now I'm gonna launch three ounces of lead and I gotta get a little bit further out to that sea blanket, that foam blanket that those waves are causing. And uh, that's what we're gonna have to do. Another thing you really wanna start to do is time the wave. So you don't wanna cast right into a wave. You wanna cast right after that sea foam is made. Yeah, see now the tide's starting to get me. 
I may have to go to a heavier weight here. That's all right, we can do that. All right, now as I said, that current and that tide is really coming up. So now we're gonna to go to a beefier setup. So this is a Pen Slammer 3, 4500. Pairing this up with a Shimano Terramar rod. This is a lot heavier of a setup. You can see the specs on this. This is a medium heavy uh, rod, 10, 20 pound test. And this is rated all the way up to like two to three ounces of lead to be thrown. And so that's exactly what we're gonna do. So I'm gonna just gonna set this up real fast. Just a high low rig. I'm gonna be throwing three ounces of lead out there cause that tide has just started to rip. So really easily, just gonna tie a surgeon's loop knot. Super simple. You can tell how easy this stuff could be even at the beach. There you go. Two loops. I'm gonna put this in my mouth, tighten it down. You got a surgeon's loop knot. That's where your weight's gonna go. Next up, just gonna use a dropper loop knot right here. See that? Just a little dropper loop knot. Nothing crazy. A couple of turns. Just like that. I gotta put this in my mouth, tighten it up. There you go. That's your first dropper loop knot. You're gonna use your second dropper loop knot. Just slit. Now remember, these fish are feeding off the bottom, so I want it pretty close. Here's my two loops right here. That's where my hook is gonna go. So I want this pretty close together because as I cast out, it's gonna be a diagonal angle, and I want these baits dragging on the bottom. So I don't want to tie it too high up the line. That'll be good right there. There we go. There's your high-low rig, ready to go. I'll put some hooks on there. If the weight goes on the bottom, we're ready to fish. And there you are, super easy. Yeah, high-low rig, just two dropper loop knots, the hooks, the weight on the bottom, that's three ounces of lead. Notice that's a flat piece of weight right there, and that's because this tide is ripping and I don't want it to roll. So I'm gonna use this flat piece of lead right here so it lays on the bottom, keeps me right where I want to be. And this is a much beefier rod, 4500 series rod. I could really launch this out there. So I'm gonna have to up the game a little bit here. Now, I'm not fishing for any bigger fish, keep in mind. I'm using bigger gear, as you can see here, but not because of bigger fish. I'm using it because I have to up the gear to get the bait into the strike zone. And that is a huge misconception out there with a lot of fish a lots. There you go, it's a easy day right there in that foam, just like I was looking for. Now we're gonna be able to catch some more fish. And that is a huge misconception out there. It's like the bigger gear you have, the bigger fish you're gonna catch. Absolutely not. You can catch some really big fish off of light, fun gear. It's just what fishing application are you using in order to try to catch those fish? And that really should be the determination on the gear that you pick. There we go, there's a the fish right there. And there we go, now we're reeling in. Just like that, it's literally that easy, fish a lot. I was actually looking at the rating of the fish. Look at all the silver sides jumping out of the water as we're coming in. Hopefully you can see that. Easy, easy fishing. We got a nice little spot here. Bigger fish, look at that. Got them bigger set up, much easier to fish, much easier to handle in these heavy surf conditions. And easy to pick off your fish right there. Oh, 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 there he goes. I was gonna show him to you. Yep, look at that, stole all my bait. Hi, Ben. You want a fish? You woke up. What's uh what's the protocol here? Yeah, yeah. Protocol. All right, ready. Let me show mommy fish a lot. The protocol of taking a pee in the ocean. Come here, bud. And we interrupt this programming so that Ben can take a pee. Right, Ben. <laughs> Hold on. Whoa! Whoa! That's so fun. You got sand on your face. Whoa! Pee pee in the ocean.